My journey to Turkey had several COVID-19 challenges, beginning with an unexpected cancellation of my September 11th flight to Istanbul. Turkish Air substituted my departure from Washington, D.C. for September 13th. Instead, I enjoyed three days of touring Washington, D.C. Museums and federal buildings were COVID-19 closed, so I visited tourist attractions including the new Black Lives Matter Plaza and St. John's Episcopal Church, the site of President Trump's photo op. Bus shuttles and metro were easy ways to get around and back to the Dulles airport for my 11 p.m. red-eye flight to Istanbul on September 13th. On September 14th, I quickly passed through immigration after a COVID-19 temperature check. I found a bus to the metro and to the Sakichi area by tram to the Bosphorus Straits and my hotel, the Golden Horn Istanbul. After checking in, I walked to the busy Circesi and Emanonu waterfront area where numerous ferry boats were crisscrossing the Bosphorus Straits and the Golden Horn. Across the street, I wandered through the covered spice bazaar and adjacent streets filled with vendors selling all types of things, including spices and Turkish delight treats, including all forms of baklava. Periodically throughout the day, I would hear the calls to prayers beginning with the first one of the day around 5.30 a.m. No need for alarm clocks here. This titled new mosque is actually 400 years old. The many restaurants under the Galata Bridge are some of my favorites because of the changing views of the ferry boats and the views of the seven hills studded with mosques. The food is good too, especially the bubbling shrimp casserole. The Sulimani Mosque, built between 1550 and 1570, which crowns one of the seven hills was a globe. Here is the view from my room at the Golden Horn Istanbul Hotel of the ferry boats crossing the Bosphorus Straits. On September 15th, I took the high-speed YHT train from Istanbul to Ankara, a three and a half hour journey compared to an eight hour bus ride. After temperature checks and hand sanitizing, I found my seat amid all the COVID-19 blocked off seats. While here, Turkey had about 9,000 COVID-19 deaths. Turkey has 1% of the world's population and has 0.8% of the COVID-19 deaths, compared to the U.S. that has 4% of the world population, yet has over 20% of the COVID-19 deaths. Universal mask wearing seems to make a big difference. 150 kilometers per hour. The scenery reminds me of the San Joaquin Valley or Eastern Washington with its grain fields and sheep.
From the Ankara train station, it was an easy metro ride to the Kizile area with the Deeps Hostel. I had to cancel my plans for train travel of two days to cars on the eastern border with Armenia because COVID-19 had closed all eastern train travel. Instead, I began touring Ankara with a stop at the Milaik Hatun Mosque on my way up to the world-renowned Museum of Anatolian Civilizations. This mosque, designed in the Ottoman style, was built in 2017 and can hold 7,000 worshippers. My walk up this cobbled street led me to the Ankara Castle. Multiple periodic calls to prayers are a frequent occurrence while traveling here. The Ankara Castle entrance is one of the ways to get to the Museum of Anatolian Civilizations near the Citadel area. This museum features artifacts from all over Turkey and represents all civilizations through the centuries, beginning with the Paleolithic Age from 8000 BC followed by the Neolithic Age to 5500 BC, the Calolithic or Copper and Stone Age to 3000 BC, the Old Bronze Age to 1950 BC, to the Hittites era to 1200 BC, to Phyrogen 700 BC, to Uratu era and Late Hattai's era 600 BC. In addition to audio tapes available in nine languages, they have well-written descriptions in Turkish and English and dioramas that display daily living. The Roman period from 129 BC to 1453 AD displays on the lower level were closed because of COVID-19. The ventilation there was inadequate. From there, I headed up to the Ankara Castle viewpoint and was entertained by these musicians along the way. Ankara has long been a trading center dating back to before 1200 BC and was taken by Alexander the Great and annexed by the Roman Empire. The Byzantines held the town for centuries with intermittent raids by the Persians and Arabs. By 1923, the Treaty of Luzon allowed Ataturk to lead the country into a secular nation-state republic headquartered in Ankara following years of wars and the demise of the Ottoman Empire. for protests. I just saw the police drag off a woman protester holding her pamphlets while the remaining police held their weapons and shields. I enjoyed both the food and the Turkish musicians at the nearby Fiesta restaurant. 
Kofti is a meatball dish consisting of beef or lamb. I returned to the Ankara Castle area to visit the nearby R.M. Koch Industrial Museum. It covers three floors with transportation, science, music, computing, and dioramas containing scenes of carpentry, shoemaking, weaving, surveying, blacksmithing, metalworking, clockmaking, etc. Some of the exhibits were interactive. I really enjoyed visiting this museum. After that, I took a short walk to see the Roman baths, but was disappointed to see that they were closed because of COVID-19. I stopped in the Gen C LIK Park for lunch at one of the many empty restaurants. This park is filled with tea gardens and restaurants along with a Luna Park fun fair. With COVID-19, the eating places are mostly empty and the Luna Park is closed. Only a few water fountains are working. Pretty desolate compared to how family filled it used to be. They have a map of the Ataturk Mausoleum and Museum, along with this posting of all the prohibited activities at the entrance. It is mostly a list to remind people to act in a respectful manner, to not protest, no picnicking, no pets, no backpacks, no bicycles, motorcycles, horses, etc. After a temperature and security check, I walked along this lion road with 24 lion statues, which led me to the massive courtyard, mausoleum, museum, and gift shop. Ataturk lived from 1881 to 1938 and was the founder of modern-day secular Turkey. He made Ankara the capital of Turkey. He had led revolutionary forces against the Allies who were attempting to carve up Turkey. As the first president of Turkey in 1923, he initiated progressive secular policies including give women the full civil and voting rights beginning in 1930. He died of cirrhosis of the liver in 1938, probably too much racky. The museum was closed because of COVID-19 but the gift shop was open. In here, you could find all things Ataturk, from t-shirts, coffee mugs, stamps, pictures, keychains, cufflinks, jewelry, statues, etc. It was a smooth three-hour freeway ride to San Fabula with lemonade and a dessert served. Only 10 people were on the bus. Again, the scenery was open green fields. I wandered around a bit in San Fabula before finding the local bus down to the ancient trading village of Karsi. Karsi was the site where saffron traders from India and Iran came to sell and trade their goods, primarily saffron, during the 17th century Ottoman era. Most of the timbered framed buildings along these narrow, windy, and cobbled streets were built during that time. This hammond has been used since the 1700s during the Ottoman era, and there are two parts, one for men and the other for women. After checking into my hotel and having lunch and some K, Turkish tea, I went to the hammond for a treatment. This is the sauna. In addition to the sauna, I received exfoliating rubdown with rough gloves a sudsing followed by a rigorous massage, and then a rinse off followed by a shower. The massage therapist's name was Typhoon, and I felt like I was in one when he was exfoliating me. The cost for this total treatment was 95 Tur Turkish lira, or about $13 plus another $3 tip. Here is a good view of the timbered buildings found throughout Karsi along with these steep cobbled streets where many restaurants and trinket shops can be found. 
I enjoyed another bubbling kofta casserole at this street side restaurant. I topped off this meal with some saffron laced pudding and a cup of cake. I walked up this steep cobbled street with some renovation nearby to the Iberlu Kunak Hotel. They gave me a room with a great view of the town below. As night fell, the evening calls to prayer were broadcast to worshipers. The Izet Mimet Pasha Mosque was built during 1794 to 1798 with a beautiful blue rug in the prayer room and ornate mosaic dome and walls. Here are some more of the tourist shops along these cobbled streets. This mosque was commissioned by and named after Izet Mehmet Pasha, who was the prime minister or vizier of the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. It was built between 1794 and 1798. Here was my chance to have some authentic Turkish coffee brewed by heating the water and coffee grounds using these charcoal briquettes. The coffee was served in a small cup along with some Turkish delights, cherry juice, and water, useful for washing out the grounds from your mouth. Tasfi restaurant across from my hotel served this saffron sauce covered filet mignon with some veggies. I topped off my meal with some raki, a Turkish national drink it clouds up with water or ice and has a taste of brandy with anise to it, about 40% alcohol content. After dinner, I headed to the restaurant where I had, had the Turkish coffee earlier in the day to hear these musicians while eating some baklava. <laughs> The hotel served up this typical Turkish breakfast as I prepared to leave for Amasra on the Black Sea. On the way to Amasra, I changed buses in Bartim. Along the way, we registered to meet the COVID-19 contact tracing requirements. From the bus, we got our first view of the Black Sea coastal town of Amasra. These three bus rides only took two and a half hours for a cost of 40 Turkish lira, about $5. Each ride required passengers to do a temperature check and hand sanitizing and mask wearing. Amasra was too small to have listings in the Lonely Planet Guide or Booking.com, so I just began wandering around this small town. I ended up near the local market and beach areas in the 
Crystal Boutique Hotel at a cost of 125 Turkish Lira per night, or $16. Hamasra is on a small peninsula with the Khmer Stone Bridge connecting it to Oztempe Island with views of the small Tavsan or Rabbit Island. Fata Mosque was a 9th century Byzantine Christian church and was converted to a mosque in 1460. This Black Sea village was beautiful with two harbors filled with fishing boats along with lots of tourist restaurants and hotels. <laughs> Only a few hardy ones are swimming at this time of year. The Amasra Museum was a surprise find and chuck full of Byzantine, Roman, and Ottoman artifacts. It was time to head back to Ankara, which would involve three separate bus rides. I think the second driver from Bartin to San Frambula called the Metro Bus Company and had them hold the bus for me at Carabao, just a few miles further than San Frambula. Once on the Metro Bus, we passed by this huge Carabao iron and steel plant on the way to Ankara. I took the Ankara Metro and spent the night at the Deeps Hostel where I met the first American tourist. The following morning, I tried to take the YHT high-speed train, but I did not have the required COVID-19 security code and no one was around to help. At the Asti bus station, some guys used their cell phones to get me the needed security code. I got my bus ticket, which would be an eight-hour ride versus the three-and-a-half-hour high-speed train ride on the YHT. I returned to Istanbul over the beautiful Bosphorus Bridge and returned to the Golden Horn Istanbul Hotel via metro and train. I began my tour of the nearby Topkapi Palace area beginning with the Yuhani Park. by the Hagia Sophia Mosque as the call to prayer was sounding, and I entered through the Gate of Salutation with its twin towers. Once in, I bought a ticket to the Hagia Irini mosque and was disappointed to see that construction material masks the beautiful dome. The Tukkepi Palace was occupied by sultans of the Ottoman Empire from the 15th to the 19th century before they moved on to the Domabachi Palace along the Bosphorus Straits. About 4,000 people lived here, and visiting officials were greeted in the audience chamber just past the Gate of Felicity.
harem was the private residence of the Sultan, along with other family members, servants, black eunuchs, and up to 300 concubines. This harem was built between 1574 and 1595 and has 300 rooms with six floors. The tour was limited to just one floor. This chamber has a three-tiered marble fountain to give the sound of cascading water, so it makes it difficult to eavesdrop on the Sultan's conversations. The Valide Sultan was the mother of the Sultan, and she ran much of the harem, including the black eunuchs, Sultan's wives, and concubines. She was also authorized to give orders directly to the Grand Vizier, or Prime Minister. The pool is empty. I had lunch before going on this two-hour Bosphorus Straits boat tour. was rebuilt in 1854. This castle fortress was built in 1451 by the Ottomans to defeat the Byzantines. The Kukuksu Pavilion, built in 1857, was used for hunting and country visits.
This bridge was named after people who were killed resisting the failed military coup in 2016. The Semsi Pasa Mosque was built and named after the Grand Visor of the Ottoman Empire in 1580. There are several legends about maidens held captive in this tower until tragedy struck by death or loss of a loved one. Our boat tour ends as we go under the bridge and dock near the Galata Bridge. This was a good value two hour boat tour. It cost just 25 Turkish lira, about $3. I decided to travel by bus to Edmirne the former capital of the Ottoman Empire, a three-hour ride north near the borders of Greece and Bulgaria. In getting the Metro bus ticket, I used the COVID-19 security code I had gotten in Ankara. I bought a round-trip ticket since I didn't want to be stranded there in case the security code no longer worked. The territory looked more like Northern California with some trees and rolling hills. The Edirne bus station was about 8 kilometers south of the city, so I found a city bus to take me there for 50 cents. This statue honors Edirne as the home of the famous oil wrestlers. Voodoo stations are found outside mosques, so worshippers can ritually cleanse themselves, beginning with the face, arms, head, and then feet, prior to formal prayers. The old mosque was built between 1404 and 1414, and its nearby covered bazaar is still in use. Although there are over 20 mosques here, the Semaye Mosque is the centerpiece. It was completed in 1575 and is on the World Heritage List, including the entire complex called Kuliyi, which includes a madras school and an arasta, a covered arcade of shops. Many believe that this is the greatest mosque in Turkey with its four minarets and the broad high dome with lots of windows that bring in the light and highlight the calligraphic decorations. Here is a view of the mosque from across the cemetery. The Edirne Archaeological and Ethnographic Museum is just across the street and contains artifacts dating back to the Thracian era with its stelas. Carpets, embroidery, calligraphy, and jewelry are featured, as well as Roman and Ottoman artifacts. The rebuilt Grand Synagogue was closed because of COVID-19. Once 20,000 Jews were here, but now just two following ethnic cleansing. My F.A. hotel was in the Kalichi neighborhood near the old mosque and the local delicacy was the thin fried liver and chilies.
It was mostly a cobble-decorated walking street, popular with uh, both locals and tourists. North of town, I visited the Sultan Bayatzit II Mosque, along with the Museum of Health that traces the history of Islamic medicine from 1488 to Here is the madrasi with its courtyard and classrooms around the perimeter. The Museum of Health portrays in many dioramas some of the treatments, equipment, and pharmaceuticals used in treating various ailments, injuries, and illnesses. Istanbul, I enjoyed some upper floor dining of curry chicken casserole in the Circisi area as the tram rumbled by. Here are some porters unloading a truck in the crowded streets. I toured the Suleimaniyi Mosque, which topped one of the seven hills of Istanbul and is a landmark of the city. It was built between 1550 and 1557. The prayer room was spectacular with a huge domed mosaic ceiling and many windows that brought in much daylight. This column was dedicated to the Roman Emperor in 330 AD. The Neurosamani Mosque was built in the 18th century on the second hill of Istanbul, right next to the Grand Bazaar. The Grand Bazaar is one of the largest and oldest covered markets in the world, with 61 covered streets and over 4,000 shops. Maybe the first shopping mall of the world started in 1455. It has withstood fires, earthquakes, and political unrest over the centuries. It attracts between 250,000 and 400,000 visitors per day pre-COVID-19. I boarded the Kabatis tram, which would take me to the end of the line, and from there, I took the funicular up to Taksim Square and the Republic Monument. Taksim Square is the popular site for political protests, football riots, and bombings. One killed 15 police in 2010. The Republic Monument celebrates the formation of the Turkish Republic in 1923, led by Ataturk. There is a vintage tram that runs down Istikal Kadisi Avenue. This wide street, once called the Grand Rue de Nara, 
features a mix of modern boutiques, international clothing, accessory stores, and restaurants housed in 19th century buildings. Many of these shops are closed because of COVID-19 restrictions or a drop in customers. When I visited the nearby Museum of Innocence, which was featured in the book I read of the same name, a tragic love story by the Turkish author Orhan Pamuk, I saw that it was COVID-19 closed. What a disappointment. While on the Asia side of Turkey, I visited the Galata Tower only to see that it was closed for renovations. I rode the tunnel to the Karaloy stop by the Galata Bridge. This tunnel, built in 1875, is the second oldest underground train after one in London. The Hagia Sophia Mosque started out as the largest Christian church of the Byzantine Empire in 1537, then became a Roman Catholic cathedral from 1204 to 1261 during the Latin Empire. In 1453, the Christian city fell to the Ottomans and it became a Muslim mosque. In 1935, Ataturk converted it into a museum to emphasize the secular nature of his new republic. I wonder if President Erdogan will keep Hagia Sophia secular as the country moves more towards supporting the Muslim resurgence with some personal freedom restrictions and his recent criticism of President Macron of France for defending secularism against radical Islam. My visit to the beautiful Blue Mosque was disappointing because the entire interior was under construction. I could not see the domes and construction materials were everywhere. The mosque was built between 1609 and 1616 with six minarets and three blue domes, making this one of the most photographed buildings in Istanbul. I visited the Basilica Cistern, which was built in 532. It stored up to 21 million gallons of water, but it was abandoned until 1545. It was reopened for tourists in 1987. I went for my second Hammond at the Hagia Sophia Hurum Sultan Hammond, built in 1556, and it was considerably remodeled. Sure, you sign this one. Okay. I bring your card. Uh, okay. I send it to my colleague, they will show the change with you. Okay. I had the 60 minute treatment, which included a rinse okay. and body scrubbing while in the sauna, a full body clay mask, and a full body bubble massage, followed by a hot rinsing. It cost me $140, and the tip was as much as I had paid for the entire Hammond massage treatment back in uh, San Frambula. The surroundings here were elegant, as was the relaxing lounge area with tea after the treatment. Here is my massage therapist, Mohammed. The waiter is preparing a testy or pottery kebab. It's a sealed clay pot filled with a stew mix of meats, usually lamb, chicken, or beef, and vegetables, usually potatoes, carrots, onions, celery root, and garlic. It is a dish from Cappadocia that resembles the fairy chimney rock formations caused by erosions. Although it takes about 90 minutes to cook, the waiter brings it out to finish it up and crack it open in front of the customers. Quite the show.
Well, they had testy kebab. I had moussaka served up in Istanbul, still bubbling. I took the metro to the Levant metro stop near the Saudi Arabia consulate to see where Saudi agents dismembered Jamal Khashoggi, a Washington Post reporter. Lots of police barricades stacked up. The Yeni, or new mosque, is close to the waterfront and Spice Bazaar and was built between 1660 and 1665, so it's hard to believe it is called new. I enjoyed visiting and eating at the Galata Bridge restaurants during my stay here. There's always a lot of interesting activity to see. The Domabachi Palace became the new home of the six sultans who ruled Turkey from 1856 until 1924. Some say the excesses on display here led to the bankruptcy of the Ottoman Empire. No pictures were allowed inside. October 2nd, I received notice that my planned 18-day tour of other parts of Turkey with Intrepid Tour was canceled, so I would not be able to visit the best of Turkey, including Gallipoli, Selkuk, Anatolia, Konya, a cruise off the southern coast, Cappadocia, a homestay in Katya, and Mount Nemrud. I decided to take this dinner and Turkish night show so I could at least get a sampling of the traditional folk dances whirling dervish and belly dancers that I would have seen during the now canceled tour.
I was able to change my return flight from October 25th to October 7th, just a few days after this performance. During my time in Turkey, I only met one other American, and it was during this dinner cruise. He was a psychiatrist who worked at the VA in Atlanta. He was with his Romanian girlfriend and had been repeatedly trying to get her a U.S. visa. After the formal show, a large group of Serbs took over the entertainment with their drums, saxophone, and tambourines. Following that, everyone was getting up to get down to the piped music. This dinner cruise along the Bosphorus Straits was an enjoyable way to close out my turkey adventures as I returned home through the San Francisco and Seattle ghost airports. Traveling during these COVID-19 times is difficult with closed tourist venues and restricted travel opportunities, coupled with mask wearing or people's appearance, emotions, and facial gestures are hidden. Go to my blog to see and read more about this and other travel adventures of mine.